kanya press corps. Welcome sa regular press briefing ni Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone, and viva nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno. Let's start with two good news. MasterCard Asia-Pacific Consumer Confidence Survey show that the Philippines has the highest optimism level among its Asian neighbors. It gathered 94.5 points, the country bested China and Cambodia, which both earned 92.2. According to the survey, the high level of optimism in emerging markets is driven by infrastructure investments that will generate more job opportunities and push for greater inclusive economic growth. The survey indicates the confidence of the business community with the country's economic resurgence. Confidence can also be attributed to the recently enacted train that will fund the country's Build, Build, Build program and other social welfare services. No? Meanwhile, consumer confidence is driven by the higher net home, net take-home pay due to the tax exemption or lower tax rates for low-wage earners. This is in turn, this in turn creates bigger purchasing power and larger consumer base. A second good news, Grant Thornton International Business Report on Filipino Businessman. We welcome the Graham Thornton International Business Report showing an overwhelming positive outlook of Philippine business leaders for 2018, which is reflected in the 86% optimism level in the last quarter of 2017. Our Filipino business leaders' optimism is the fourth highest among the 36 countries surveyed. That optimism is backed by solid macro and microeconomic indicators that make the Philippines one of the top performing countries in the world. We remain confident that the country's economy will continue to thrive under the Duterte administration, especially with the enactment and implementation of the train and other tax packages to further improve our growth. A little, um, the PSE, a third good news, was named as the best stock exchange in Southeast Asia. We welcome the um, uh, recognition of the Philippine Stock Exchange as the best exchange in Southeast Asia by institutional investment magazine Alpha Southeast Asia. This is the fourth time in five years that the PSE won this award. Alpha Southeast Asia's marquee awards cited the PSE's initiative on tech development, project launches, and investment literacy. These initiatives contribute to the strategy of to foster capital market development through promotion of efficiency in trading, settlement, and delivery of securities. This strategy supports the goal of fostering a resilient and inclusive financial and monetary system, which ultimately helps create more entrepreneurs and jobs. A bit of a briefing on some matters discussed in yesterday's cabinet meeting. The president, um, stated that he will continue with the process of cleansing the bureaucracy and that he will now turn more of his attention to local government units, including the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. The president also indicated that he will push for Congress to enact a law that would ban all firecrackers and pyrotechnics. Pyro, firecrackers and pyro, techniques, gadgets. No? Now, he realizes that there will be about 75,000 um, individuals who are working in this industry. He instructed the Department of Trade and Industry to um, look for alternative livelihood for the would-be displaced workers. He wants um, Congress to um, um, enact this law as soon as time possible so that the public debate on the banning of fireworks and pyrotechnics could begin as early as possible. No? Now, the president also in yesterday's um, cabinet meeting affirmed that he will rebuild Marawi. General Del Rosario reported that the cost of rebuilding Marawi will be more or less 50 billion. He committed that he will find funding sources for this 50 billion, although in the 2018 budget, 20 billion is already appropriated for this purpose. He also said, and this is upon recommendation of um, Secretary Dominguez, that the terms of reference for the promote proponent that would rebuild the most affected area, that these terms of ref reference should be provided by government and not by the proponent. The president also ordered um, several lagging concessions in Zamboanga Peninsula, Peninsula to be suspended. This after 
Um, he was apprised of concerns of indigenous populations uh, that they have been displaced by logging operations of some company. And he also observed that it is widespread logging that is responsible for the flash floods that Mindanao experienced um, only this month of December with two typhoons. Also, the president rejected the idea of uh, regional PNPs even in the context of federalism. He said that um, he wants the PNP to still be under the um, Philippine National Police, at least until such time that we have gotten rid of regional warlords. No? Now, in connection with the second tax reform package, the president also stated that uh, with the second tax reform package, he, he has instructed DBM and all other agencies to find means to increase the salary of teachers after the initial doubling of salaries for the AFP and the police. So the teachers will be next. There was also a revocation of the agreement between the Department of Labor Employment and PESA on the monitoring compliance with labor safety standards. Obviously, this revocation is borne by the fact that at least two PESA establishments um, recently had man-made tragedies, and um, part of the tragedies was traced to failure to comply with labor safety standards, including the recent tragedy in Davao involving the NCCC mall. And also, he instructed the um, presidential advisor on Mindanao Affairs, TESDA, the presidential advisor on OFW, to study ways and means to conscript into the AFP and the PNP at least 4,000 Maranaos affected by the fighting in um, Marawi and other areas where the Maranaos have settled. Okay? Questions? Laila Salaveria. Mike, nasa unan. Thank you. Good morning, sir. On the fire tracker ban, was this um, because of the recommendation of the DOH or was this prompted by the results of the limited use of firecrackers during the recent holidays? You know, the president has always banned firecrackers in Davao City as a mayor, so I don't think it's a result of a recommendation of any other than it's a result of his own prognosis that firecrackers and pyrotechnics are inimical to human health and safety. Sir, will, will, uh, will there be any consultation with the industry? Yes, in fact, that's why he wants Congress to enact the law, begin hearing on the proposed bill that would ban firecrackers as early as possible to afford stakeholders to be consulted. So, sir, dun sa um, focus on LGUs in the anti-corruption drive, what triggered this? Were there any new complaints submitted to him? None, but he just said that um, he will also focus not just on presidential appointees, but also on local government officials, sir, including the ARML. Last lang on the anti-corruption drive. What has happened to uh, the anti -graft, presidential anti-graft commission he was supposed to form? It's been established, but um, it hasn't been constituted, but the president has not waited for its constitution before um, he has started actually the, the, the purging of corrupt officials in government. As you know, we, even without the commission, he has gone ahead and fired many of his presidential appointees. But can we expect the commission to still be formed? I believe so, but he's not waiting for its constitution before he moves against corruption. He's shown that with or without it, he has a firm resolve against corruption, and he will implement it. Thank you. Okay, follow up on corruption. Uh, Rose Novanario. Hi, good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, sa interview kay OIC Anyo ng DILG, sabi po niya yung narcolist daw po ng, ng pinahawak ni Presidente, i-revalidate daw po ng PNP. Yung po bang paglilinis ng LGU ay may ka kaugnayan dito sa narco politics po na sinasabi dati pa ni Presidente? I'm sure it's all connected, no? um, but I guess uh, the president uh, mentioned in the cabinet meeting his resolve also to clean up the ranks of um, the local government um, executives to highlight that it's not just presidential appointees that will be subject to this um, um, campaign to promote public accountability, but includes everyone in government. Supportado po ni Presidente yung sinabi po ni General Anyo na uh, posibleng matanggal sa kamay ng mga mayors ang control sa pulisya pag napatunayan during the revalidation of the narcolist na sangkot sila sa drugs. 
Well, the president has deprived actually some mayors of this uh, police power, and he's acting within his powers as chief executive to do so. Follow up, Pierre Nyada. Microphone. Sir, on the increase on the salary of teachers, did the president specify by how much he would want their salaries increased? Is it also a doubling, like for the military? Well, uh, he has a, He did not say how much, but he says that there will have to be tangible um, results of any implementation of the second tax reform package, and he said that that should be the increase in teacher salary. But judging by what he wanted for the PNP and the AFP, it could be that he is also aiming to double the uh, entry salary for teachers. I'll answer just on the closure of the logging concessions, because we also got from Secretary It's Pinon, not a closure, it's a suspension. A, sorry, a suspension that uh, that uh, si Environment Secretary Simatu com committed to a probe of, the, of these allegations. So does the President want the suspension right away or the probe first? Uh, will he get the side of the logging concessions to validate the accusations of the indigenous peoples? He has ordered the suspension without prejudice to the probe. But meanwhile, it should be suspended. Okay, question? Other issue? JP Bensito. Hi, sir. Good morning. Sir, on federalism, um, Sir, meron na po bang tumanggap dun sa previous offer ni PRRD to form a 25-member constitutional commission to uh, possibly serve as an advisory body to draft a new charter? May updates na po ba dito, sir? I have no updates other than I know for a fact that Congress did not wait for the creation of the 25-man committee and went ahead and divided its members into committees to make uh, proposals for the uh, revisions of the 87 Constitution. So in other words, with or without it, Congress nonetheless um, organized and um, came up with proposals on how to revise the Constitution. Follow up, other issue? Follow up, Layla. Um, sir, uh, the proposed committee was supposed to submit recommendations to the President, and the President was supposed to submit this to Congress. Since wala no committee, will the palace be um, sharing its input or participating in any way in the charter change process? There are two things. This is without prejudice to the president still committing, creating this commission. No? All I'm saying is what I do know is that Congress, meanwhile, did not wait for the creation of the commission uh, before it studied proposals on how to revise the Constitution. So it's going ahead. And of course, since the leadership of both houses have agreed on constitutional um, assembly as a mode for revising the Constitution, it's really up to Congress on what provisions they want to propose to the people for amendments and revisions. But sir, since the President has also been a major advocate of federalism, will he or the palace in any way um, try to participate or contribute to the effort? I do know that PDP Laban, the President's official party, has proposed um, specific um, revisions of the Constitution. So there are proposals emanating from the allies of the President, including his own political party. Okay, Trisha Safra, GMA7. Hi, sir. Uh, still on the issue of federalism. Sir, yesterday, some of uh, our congressmen uh, expressed their agreement with the idea of postponing the 2019 elections to give way to a transitory government in preparation for federalism. Sir, uh, how open is the president to this idea of postponing the 2019 elections? In fact, the president discussed this issue again in yesterday's cabinet meeting. He reiterated he is against um, no L. He wants to push through with elections in 2019 and has committed to give us the most honest and the most credible elections in 2019. Sir, uh, but some lawmakers are saying that um, a transitory government well, would not be doable if the elections will not be postponed in 2019. Um, how does the president assess the As situation? I said, if they're able to amend the constitution and have the people ratify it before 2019, that's the only possibility of um, postponement, the postponement of the elections. But unless the constitution is actually ratified by the people in the president calling for the transitory provisions, elections will push through. Um, follow up. Ah. Trisha, other issue? 
Sir, on another matter, po, going back to the high optimism uh, level of the country based on uh, two, uh, two surveys, sir, uh, today the SWS also released its survey on net personal life optimism and net optimism on uh, Philippine economy, and the ratings were excellent. Uh, sir, um, do you also attribute this to the recently uh, enacted tax reform law, and how does the government uh, plan to use uh, these numbers? In, uh, in this year? I think it's not just the train. It's the fact that the president has shown that he has political will to make changes as he promised in the elections. No? He has conducted a successful anti-drug campaign. He has conducted a successful anti-corruption campaign. He has pushed for the first tax reform package. He will push for further tax reform uh, measures in Congress. And in turn, the people know that all the directions taken by the president are towards the right direction and that they seem to be benefiting from initiatives undertaken by the president. I don't think it can be attributed solely to train. Of course, train helps because the train will enable us to embark on this ambitious build, build, build program that is expected to create more jobs and economic opportunities for our people. Sir, after the enactment of the train law, some critics of the law, of course, um, have emerged. No? Um, do you think these ratings and numbers will change after the first quarter once um, the tax reform has already been uh, implemented? And of course, uh, with the emergence of the critics of the train law. I think the surveys indicate that even with train, the people support the direction being taken by the president and that they are very, very optimistic about their future, um, even with train um, having been in, uh, passed and enacted into law. Sir, last na po on train. Sir, may mechanisms ba itong train law to address the problem of um, our self-employed professionals who do not pay the right taxes? Well, of course, the issue of better tax administration is separate from um, the train itself. Although the fact that more people are exempt from paying income tax every year will surely help no? because it will encourage people to actually pay taxes now that they know that the tax base is a lot lower compared to the past. Okay, Tina, Tina Men, follow up. Good morning, sir. Sir, morning. well, there's so much optimism based on the survey. How would you, how is the government uh, translating it to MASA? Sir, kasi with the train implementation and even with the explanation of Malacanang now, wala pa dapat mataas na pasahe o, o, o presyo ng gasolina, nararamdaman na ng MASA ng tao na may sumasakay ng tricycle from 45 pesos, 50 pesos na ngayon yung isang kilong isda na dagdagan na ng 50 pesos dati, lesser than that. Tumataas na ang presyo ng mga bilihin. Nararamdaman ng pangkaraniwang tao. Pero anong ginagawa ng gobyerno? Unang-una, hindi naman ganun kataas as uh, shown by Secretary Dominguez yesterday. No? Hindi po malaki ang impact ng train sa pagtaas ng mga presyo ng bilihin. Ang sabi nga po nila, wala pang 1% ang magiging contribution ng train sa overall inflation. So hindi po ganun kataas para maramdaman talaga ng taong bayan. Pangalawa, eh kaya naman po sila umaasa pa rin na mas mabuting kinabukasan. Eh alam naman nila na yung additional na makukolekta ng gobyerno ay eh mapupunta sa proyekto na pakikibang, makakaroon sila ng pakinabang unang-una. At pangalawa, mga proyekto na magbibigay din ng uh, economic uh, stimulus no? na mag magre-resulta sa mas maraming trabaho at uh, oportunidad para sa lahat. Kaya po merong optimism. Okay, follow up on train. Uh, RJ, oh, other issue? May train question? Wala na. Sige, RJ. Uh, sir, one of the priority measures which will be tackled in the Senate when sessions resume is the death penalty. Does President Duterte expect to sign it this year or before his term ends? He leaves it to Congress. No? Um, he has, of course, identified it as a um, administration measure and he respects the Senate when it will pass it, if it does so. Okay, sir. Thank you. Questions? Okay. Uh, Nestor. Good morning, folks. Uh, latest aerial shots of the Kagiting and Reef released by the Chinese state media showed it was transformed into a air base complete with military facilities and hospitals. So what will be the government's move this time? Will we continue to rely on China's good faith? You know, that's a misplaced question. When we say we are relying on China's good faith, it is because China has committed not to embark on new 
reclamations. Now, you mentioned Sang Island ito. Kagitingan, Kagitingan is one of the islands that it had already reclaimed. And this is also one of the islands subject of the arbitral tribunal's decision that it, it is within the Philippine economic, economic zone. No? So when China, when we invoke the good faith of China, it is against making further reclamations and not making further works on islands that it had already reclaimed. So I hope that is very clear. So the good faith we're relying on is the commitment of China not to embark on new reclamations. Okay? Uh, Defense Secretary Lorenzana yesterday said uh, the, if this will be proven true, uh, they will be filing a diplomatic protest against China. Uh, what's of course, the that's the proper remedy. No? But that's something that the Department of Foreign Affairs will have to address. No? Um, but all I'm saying is that there is still no breach of the good faith obligation for as long as China has not embarked on new reclamations. Okay? Philip, follow up on China. Sir, good morning. So does it mean if the Chinese militarize these islands, it would be okay for the Philippines? It's so certainly not okay because, of course, it, it constitutes a further threat to um, peace and security in the area. No? But the point is, has there been a breach of Chinese uh, commitment not to reclaim any new islands or shoals in the area? For as long as there is none, then we continue to respect that they are true to their commitment not to do so. But for, I think from the very beginning, China, we knew, was military, militarizing the area by reclaiming these areas and by using them as military bases. So the fact that they are actually using it now as military bases, as far as I'm concerned, is not new news. It's not news. Because we've always been against the militarization of the area. Okay. But the good faith commitment is not to reclaim new islands. I hope that's very clear. Um, Chinese state media is also reporting that they, there is a plan to deploy uh, nuclear platforms before 2020 in uh, Chinese-controlled islands in the South China Sea. The, the, these pl platforms would provide electricity to the islands. Would this be okay uh, to the Philippine government if these nuclear platforms are deployed within the exclusive economic zone of the country? Well, the tribunal says that if this um, infrastructures are within a EEZ, only the coastal state, the Philippines, has the right to make these installations in these artificial islands. So I think without doing anything, the tribunal already articulated the correct um, uh, legal position of the country and the le correct legal principle no, that it is the Philippines as a coastal state that should exercise sovereign rights within its exclusive economic zone. So it's a no. That would be probably the subject of a separate protest okay, as thank contrary you, to the sovereign rights of the Philippines. Thank you. Okay, Pia Gutierrez, still on China. Microphone, please, Nestor. Hi, sir. Sir, is there a plan down the line by the Philippine government to recover these islands already controlled by China, or do we already consider it too late now because of the many developments that they've already finished there? We have plans which we can't discuss. But, sir, it's not um, in the near future, pa, or is it still... We have plans. Mm -hmm. We can't discuss it. It's a traditional exception to freedom of information, military secrets, and uh, diplomatic matters. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Pia. Questions? Other issue? Okay. Ace Romero? Okay. Lana. Thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Thank you. Enjoy your day without internet. Okay, thank you. Wala, I have no signal. I have none. Ah, ganun okay. China talaga. Okay. Okay, thank you Malacanang Press Corps, Bactor, Main Studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television. Bakit nagkukweso kayo? Tapos na. Okay, see you Thursday.